Okay, about to begin turn five, January, February, 1919. Still a winter turn. Um, we need to figure out who's going to have the initiative. So let's roll the dice and figure that out. Reds continue their good rolls, or at least that field staff shit really is, was a good investment, but they've been doing pretty well in rolls anyway, so they retain the initiative. Okay, so now we're gonna do the Random event for the whites. It's going to be number nine. Ooh, that was almost partisans. That would have been great. Nope. Unless it's winter, place a white river flotilla, if available, with any supplied non-reading infantry or cavalry unit on a river, including the Volga. Well, it's winter, so we don't get the flotilla, so that's, that's a bit of bad luck there for the whites. Um, it would have been nice to have had that. That actually would have been pretty cool. All right, reds. You roll 11, I believe that is definitely gonna be a red leader. Yep, that's a red leader. So once again, we're gonna put the red leaders in the cup. Uh, now you can see that the, the reds are gonna start. Um, I'll move it over here so I can show it off the... Uh, you can see it's morning because I have a coffee instead of an adult beverage. Um, you can see here that the uh, Bolsheviks already have the Field staff, one fill that gives me initiative bonus, and they also have friends in the southwest. And, and so we're going to pick another leader here. Oh, it's the awfully ineffective uh, Kaminev. Uh, he's a zero value. You'd really like to maybe... Um, so what I could do is I could place him, I believe, in the field staff and knock Igorov out, and Igorov would just go back into the chit to be further drawn. Which honestly, I might just do because ugh, Kamina is so worthless. Uh, even if I was able to get one of these chits for free, I wouldn't get the overstack bonus. And and I'm okay now with a lot of the chits I have. I don't really need any of the other ones. I mean, I could use the East or the South being for free, but not with the zero stack. I really need something that can stack there. So I'm gonna. I believe I can do that. I say I can do that, of course, and then I'm just using my own memory. So let's take a look and make sure. Red leaders. They are only removed when replaced, and then they're put back in the leader pool, and they can either be placed in the field staff command box, printed on the map, or randomly assigned a front command box. They never move, including between command boxes. Yeah, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to replace uh, Igorov. Nothing, nothing against you, Igorov, dude, but this guy is a political liability, so we'll make him feel good by promoting him to the level of management. I'm sure many of you can attest to the efficacy of that in the real world. Okay, so that's actually okay. I mean, they got an event, but honestly, that wasn't a very good pull for them, so that actually kind of saved the whites there. Um, not getting their own event and having the reds rules a fairly ineffective red leader, so that's pretty good. Actually, totally ineffective red leader, what am I saying? Okay, so chit selection. That's kind of... You can see we got a whole bunch of them down here, right? So the question is, what are we gonna... What do we want to use here? Thinking, well, obviously the east or the south, what we're going to choose to go first. So I'll just kind of pull them off to the side. But yeah, southwest is going to go in, Siberians, Tsar, Polish, field staff, all these fun shits, right? And there we go. And what will I do, east or south? There's a situation in the South with scary tanks, right, and um, the Partisans, which I, honestly, when I had those uh, replacements come in, I put them here, but I could have put them here, and there's a resource hex, and I need to start grabbing resource hexes pretty quickly, so, oof, this is, that's an interesting front. Um, and then there's the Eastern Front here with that, and it might be worth going first here, just so I can get the jump on some units or start moving these guys back up. That's actually not a bad idea. Um, mainly because I just really want to start crushing this so I can start really focusing on this uh, up there. So yeah, I think we'll have the east go first. So we'll take east and then south will go in the cup. Okay. Awesome. Let's see. Next. 
Here comes the Machno Allegiance phase. And this is where we need to see if he's going to switch or if this group is going to switch. Determine which player's units are closest in a number of hexes. Ignore Zox, but do not count across all C hex sides. If both players' units are equal distance, assume the white player is closer. And if we look here at our friends, the Machnos, well, they're soon not to be my friends, I guess, if you're the whites. And they're fast friends if they're the reds. So we can see they're one, two, three away, one, two, three away. So we replace him with a red one, which is fine because I think I'm going to head over there and try to crush him anyway. So that actually kind of works for me. Um, this unit is more pesky than it is not, so it's almost worth just trying to get rid of. Although, if you remember, the reds can resurrect it one time for free on its disordered side, and then it's you eliminate it again, it's, it's completely gone. Okay, so we did that. So let's take a look at the east front. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So the question becomes. What am I going to do here? Um, kind of want to focus. Oh, wait, I guess I should pull out because I actually have units all the way down here. And uh, this is where it may be actually valuable to bring in a little elevated position. And it helps tons, but right, we'll see about that. Actually, it creates more of a shadow effect, doesn't it? One thing about lights, I just don't have very poor light right now. It's not very good sunlight in Portland, so we're just going to have to make do with what we got, okay? Okay. So we're going to get these armies back up here because they've accomplished their task of taking out the Arouse Cossacks over there. Uh, I probably should seize that town for red glory, but I don't really want to waste movement points doing so. And it'll still be another couple turns before that unit, if it comes back, could come back. Oh, and it would be kind of annoying, but there's not much I can do about it. Because I can't really keep a unit station there, and I don't really want to deploy a garrison to hold it. So it'll probably be another problem in like three turns, but eh, that's three turns away. So let's get these guys back up in range. I think we're just going to go straight up. Okay, so that gets them a little closer, and that's the whole goal of eventually is to put pressure on Ufa, because now it's completely weak, but we also have this to deal with, and the impending movement of these guys. Oh wait, I'm so stupid. I have no strategic movement. <laughs> I was just looking at that on the order, and I was like, don't forget it this time, because it's, you know, it's kind of important now. Let's move, luckily this was easy to fix. Okay, so strategic movement. Uh, we start with the, I believe, non-initiative player. Yeah. So I can move two in the south, two in the north or east, I guess, really is what it is. Um, there's nobody I really need to train over. Yeah. Nobody's in a city that I really need to move, so they're totally good. Um, in terms of the Siberians, do they need to train anything? And the truth is... They want to train something to Ufa, they really can't, because I took these guys out, which was okay with me. And these guys can't train any further, because they can only guard these two towns. That's our eight hex limit from their home crew hex in Omsk. So no, they're not going to train anything. Good question. Well, I had the extremely rare occurrence of having all the memory on my phone fill up, because uh, I use my phone to record these videos. I think I've said that before, and it's probably obvious because I have this sort of not huge perspective that goes that way and should be coming this way uh, for people that have like real cameras that do this. But I just use my phone because it seems to work out fairly well. And I don't know, maybe it annoys some, but yeah, I think I get pretty good quality out of it. So I'm happy with it. <clears throat> I mean, I'm just recording war games here. <laughs> I'm not filming like masterpieces of cinema or whatever. Um, although this is cinema of the mind, I guess, or whatever, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, what was I saying? I was interrupted about strategic movement. Um, the long and short of it is nobody's going to move. There's nothing to move. The Reds have to keep a unit over here to keep Poland from entering the war. I'm not going to move the guy out of Vologda because the AIF is roaming around there, and I don't want to have them feel opportunistic. 
Um, so we'll see this Northwest Army that's moving over here, though, is kind of making me wonder about what's going to happen here. But I just have too much going on here to really worry about a few measly armies that may nonetheless capture a resource city for the whites, which I don't want, but they may do it anyway. So we drew the East Front. So let's actually do what we're going to do before. All that was for naught, or rather was just, uh, as they say, academic. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go ahead and move these guys. One, two, three. One, two, three. And let's see. What do we want to do here? The, the real question is that I don't want to um, give them easy opportunities. But I also kind of want to start pecking away at their own hurt troops. And there's some good ones opportunities there. Hmm. They're in the mountains, that kind of makes them here. Really, it's just this guy's just hanging out to dry, and really I should try to do something about it, but I really can't right now, um, because I just don't have the numbers. I, the thing is, he can just sort of take me on piecemeal if I don't do something about it. So move those guys up. They've Too bad they couldn't have been here a turn before. Let me make sure that partisans don't need Pretty sure partisans don't have to trace supply. Otherwise, what's the point, right? It's funny because like it only tells you about the availability on the specialness of it. So then you have to go to the supply rules and probably find like the special um, supply for. Units unaffected by supply partisans. Yep, okay. <laughs> there it was. Uh, anyway, we'll move this guy. Uh, one, two, three. He's slowly going to start creeping up. I think that's going to be somewhat effective. I don't know. It's going to be difficult. We'll see because they don't project a zone of control. So the only thing I can really do is have him like, zoom up to take Omsk. Just going to, I say zoom, it's going to take him like forever to get there with his slow partisan movement. Everybody's got slow rates. There's really no movement that's faster than three. I don't even know why they have movement on the counters, to be quite honest. Everything moves at three, except for the cavalry, which moves at four. So you might as well have just had, like, no movement or something. I don't know. Anyway. Hmm. Neither here nor there. <sighs> okay, so I could take these guys out and come down here. And that would keep him from taking the city, because he couldn't get supply there. Um... Because by zone control, he'd have to negate it and then hold it. I guess he could do that, but that's not really going to be super advantageous. And that would get me. I could bring this guy up into the city. That would give me, what, 4, 8, 12, 13. So that would give me 2 to 1 odds. Although, yeah, and I'd be attacking from the river. Yeah, I got to take those kind of shots. Um, especially because I have numbers I think I can bring down. So that's what we'll do. We'll go 2. I'll move here, and yeah, that's what we'll do. And then we'll kind of bring the attack right here on these units, because they're kind of sticking in the open. I am attacking from the river here, so he doesn't get any defensive shift. It is two to one combat. Let's go ahead and roll die. The reds gain just ever so slight the advantage on a five to four roll. So the red units have one, two, three, four units attacking. So four times five is twenty. They get three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So they have a thirty-one differential. The whites have three units times four is twelve. Minus two is eight. It's nine, ten. I should have written that down because now, of course, I've lost it. Of course, if you're watching, you're like, I know the number. Um, it's 10, and what do we have? 20, and then we have 3, 6, 9, 11, so yeah, 31 minus 10 is 21. So even on a 2 to 1 attack, we still have the highest differential we can get. And that is a capital D retreat. So, too bad we did not win the initiative here. That means that guy takes a loss. This guy takes a loss. This guy takes a loss. And they have to retreat. Oh, that's
that's gonna be rough. That is real rough. Oh, I can maybe stack a guy here though. Wait, how much do they have here? Three. Oh yeah, that still sucks, okay. Ooh, he's not replaceable, though they're all okay. Okay, well this guy's gonna go one, two, and chill out there. And unfortunately, this unit's gonna get smoked. There's nowhere I can put it where it won't end up in a zone of control or pass through a zone of control. And it can't stack here, so it, it dies effectively. Wow, man, so, hmm. <laughs> that was pretty good there, Reds. But see, that could have been not very good for them, of course, if they had rolled the one, or even if they rolled like a two. Um, you know, then that would have been what, just eight, and they would have had it would only have been a plus 10 differential, and then they would have suffered at least a nutritional loss, and if they'd have rolled a one, then it would have just been a total hosing, and they would have not done very well. Um, yeah, okay, well, that's the way the cookie crumbles, right? So those two guys are gone. And once again, the Reds now are feeling confident, because that was a very good battle, using the nice advantage of the Latvian rifles and full-strength armies, and I think we will advance after combat. Or do we want to do that? No, I think we'll just hold there. I think that's okay with that. Okay. All right, the Northwest, Chit. And not much gonna go on there. I'm kind of wondering if we should go down and seize this city. Um, the resource city of Minsk with our Northwest armies. I'm wondering if that's something we should be doing because I just don't think I'm gonna be able to get Petrograd really. And there's definitely could use some support down here um, in this section of the board. The whites could definitely use a little bit of help because I'm, you yeah. know, so I think that's what we're gonna do. I think we're just gonna be that way with those guys. So they're gonna go one, two. Forest doesn't provide me any defense at all, does it? No. And you can't even walk into it because it costs too much. And I can't enter into Poland because it's not prohibited while it's a neutral country. So I think I'll just hold there. And then next turn, uh, I can use my movement to take Minsk if the Reds don't see my intent, which they obviously do. Um, I can't attack this garrison. Whites cannot do that. Only the Free Corps could attack it. So that's not really going to... And that's such a weird rule. I don't really know why. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm quoting that right. But um, the Whites can't attack garrisons. Only the Reds can. And it's not super central for them to get resource cities right now unless they're trying to grab the resource win, which will become more important later. So anyway, Northwest. Field staff chit. Is there something I really feel like I should be moving? I guess I could use it to move the south front. Could use it to move the southwest front. Because mm -hmm. I have the partisans there now and I can go. Not really do much. I guess they're really just going to kind of hang out there. They don't, they don't need to leave their little city. They get a nice little defensive bonus for being in the city. Uh, and there's nobody else that really needs to go. So I guess essentially it's, I guess I could just activate the southern front, which I think I just will do, because I probably need to figure out what the south, southern front needs to figure out what it's doing. Yeah, I think we'll just stick with that. So field staff will activate the southern shit. And... Oh, I didn't reposition the train. I guess I could have done that during strategic movement, but I didn't, so, you know, that's just my fault. Not that it would really help. I don't think I would move anywhere else. Okay, so we have these guys here, we have this army here, but now we have numbers. We can start ganging up on guys and hopefully getting some nice results. So we got two, four, six units in a city that does not provide them any sort of defense. So I think this is the perfect opportunity to strike. We will bring... Yeah, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this guy, he's gonna go one, two, 
This guy will come down and be the one, two, and this guy will come down there. And I think, oh, I wouldn't, no, maybe I can, right? Oh yeah, because the partisans don't, one, two, three, X, yeah, the partisans don't block. I guess technically they do though. Um, supply does not flow through the Machno district, does it? I think that's one of those other little funky rules that we discussed earlier, and I should have remembered it. Supply. A supply path is interrupted or blocked by the following unoccupied Machno district cities. So yeah, that technically blocks supply, so he cannot um, come down here. I was gonna have him go one, two, three, but he can't actually get supply there because they don't control the sea. Uh, it doesn't lead to a supply source. I don't think that would give him supply anyway. And this is the only other hex because it's right by that, right? So I would have almost had the four units around here, which would have been really nice, but I'll just take what I can get here. Um, I think we'll leave these armies there. I could just sort of get more aggressive in blocking Tsaritsyn. Uh, and I may do that, actually. I think what we'll do is we'll pull this army down here. And we'll do that because that way they can't gang up on the end of the line here. It's really just going to be... Um, they can still gang up on units, don't get me wrong, but we'll see. This should, this should prohibit some active movement around Tsaritsyn, give me more time to react. Anyway. So these three units are going to attack here. That is a six stack, right? Yeah, so it's a two to one. We're on the river, they're in a red city, so they get no defensive bonuses here. So we roll the die. All right, four to three. That means the reds have three units, that's nine. They also have plus three each attacking. I have a little bit of dog hair there. Come to me, dog hair. And so that was at 18, so they have a diverge of 18 going into it. The defenders rolled a four, and they have three units, so that's 12 plus one, two, three. So that's what, 15? So the differential is only plus three on a two to one. And a plus three is little a, little d, retreat. Um, yeah, so that's not bad. So basically, one of these units takes a hit. I think we'll have it be the North Caucus unit. Although, is it better to have this one? This one might have less bad. This one has less bad negative modifiers, but I think we'll go ahead and just take, although, yeah, we'll just go ahead and have this guy get injured. So he'll take the hit there. And then I think we'll choose to have this army take the hit. And the defenders have to retreat, so they're actually okay, because they'll just go one, two. They're actually safe. They can actually get out and not violate weird stacking rules. And I could advance after combat if I want. I think I will. All right, there we go. So that was that. Not bad, not bad. Could have been a lot worse. You can see here, even a small differential, though, really almost caused chaos. If they'd have rolled a two, I mean, then they would be talking one other than six plus nine is 15. Yeah, I mean, we'd only been plus one, and at that point, there's not a retreat. It's just AD result, which would have been not that great for them. Uh, so, I mean, it did do that in the two to one, right? Oh, I did, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, just making sure I did that right. Okay. So that was that staff chit. All right, next. Southwest. Um, don't think there's anything I need to do in the Southwest. Yeah, we're not in the Southwest front. I do have those Machno partisans. I suppose I will just go for the glory of the Soviets, I will take Katerina Slav. I guess technically, 
I don't know if he flips units. Actually, no, I didn't do that with the whites, so I'm not going to do that with the reds. Um, I think they're just going to sit there and be annoying. I think that's their main role. Although soon they will flip to whites, and then I can start moving around and doing things like cutting supply. But there's nothing they can really do to cut white supply, so that's okay. Okay. All right, Siberian. So what will the Siberians do? Hmm. He sort of got walloped there. It would have been nice to have actually like one initiative here and been able to maybe dictate the terms of how we were going to react here. But let me close the door. My dog is open. So the question becomes what to do. And I think we're going to have to. Oh, there's nothing to really punish. This was just such. That really worked out. I didn't even plan that. That's how stupid I am. <laughs> or, you know, maybe brilliance through stupidity. Uh, moving these guys up to really cut off the retreat path. That was actually quite good. Um, that makes this situation here not really easily held, so we're going to definitely pull back once again to the mountains and go one, two, three. Uh, and these guys will pull back here. And we will leave a garrison in Ufa just to be annoying. Um, because we can. And garrisons are fun. So usually in my other games, garrisons do get, do a fairly good job of getting some attritional results. If it's just like a one-on-one -on -one -on encounter, but they'll be able to bring so much in so many numbers, it'll really just be a, a speed bump of anything. So okay, Siberians. All right, south, but we already moved the south, so that shit is no longer applicable. The North and Islamic Front is once again going to pretty much remain the way it is because I, that unit has not recovered and I'm not willing to make the push on that until we have a recovered status unit, so not going to do that. Alright, next chip. Same thing with the Polish front, there's just nothing really going on there, so we don't need to move these guys. I will just briefly show it to you. Um, until there's a really a threat going on from the Reds, they just don't really need to move that much, so I think we'll just keep them the way they are. I guess I could have done that wide angle, that would have been nice. Still got that cavalry raid marker. Hmm, might be something to think about as the logistics chip comes up. So once again, everybody's in supply. Yeah, everybody is in supply. Um, nobody's out of supply, so I think we're just gonna do rally rolls now. Let's go ahead and just start with our friends down here in the south so we can see them. Uh, there's a lot of injured people here. So let's do North Caucasus and the Cossacks at once. I'll do the white die for the Caucasus. Nope, they don't rally. I think everybody's okay there. Yeah, and I should be using the tweezers. I will say this. I got this, you know, I think I told the story about how I ordered this randomly through GMT one night and then it arrived, you know, years ago. And they didn't use the nice thick counters here. I don't know if I can really show you that, but it's, it's a nice thick style. And so you can really easily grab these. That's why I use my grubby fingers all the time. Oh, look at that. I can tell we got an injured guy right there. It's got FSR. Is there anybody else hurt? I don't think so. Yeah, just AFSR. So we'll go ahead and roll for them. No, it's not getting too good on the rally rolls here. And see if you if in the beginning of the game you actually roll and the czar lives, then you get to rally one unit for free, which is nice. Okay, so who else? Let's go ahead and just do people in our section here. The red train's there, nothing's around it. So let's go ahead and do the eighth army and the third army. I'll make the third army, which is uh, that one. We'll make it the white die. 
No, but the 8th Army does rally. Okay. Let's shift over to Poland. So Poland needs ones, right, to get its guys. So I'm just going to roll two at a time. Uh, put this down where it won't knock over a bunch of counters. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to roll two at a time for Poland. Ooh, one did rally. All right, one more set. Oh, two ones. So yeah, we'll take one there and there. Wow, okay. And another one. Man, they really killed it there. So yeah, we'll rally them all there. Wow, that makes the... So you can see now the Polish army is no joke. Bolsheviks are going to have a hard time tackling this group that has slowly rallied. I mean, they have to roll ones when they're neutral, so that's pretty good. Um, Northwest, we have two of those guys, so... Rolling two at a time, I get one and two. Nice. All right, so both these guys are in action. This makes this force much more potent, and I'm about to take it outside of... I need to read the supply rules for them, but I'm about to think about taking them out. Uh, there is an AIF unit up there. He does not rally. Uh, now we come here to this front. There's no red guys, except for the partisans, but they're not technically in supply, even though they don't need it, so they don't get to rally. Uh, that leaves just our Siberian friends. Let's go ahead and roll for that west unit. No. What was it, the Siberian? Anybody else hurt? Just the Siberians to see if that Siberian unit rallies. It does. Alright, so we need that. I guess it's a little bit of oomph there. That's actually a really good unit, so that's a good one to get the... Again, using my grubby fingers. Uh, we've got two injured units here, so let's roll the red die for the people unit there on top. No, so nothing rallies there. And the final area to look at is over here, the north. So we have, let's do the Russian unit there. No, and I believe it's just that northern unit there. And it does rally, so now, now we can start getting serious about thinking about attacking, because we do have some nice modifiers there. So wow, that could put the pressure next turn on the Soviets. So, okay. White's getting some nice rallies there. Nothing super great, but something, you know, something's better than nothing. Easily. All right, next chip. We got two left in the cup. I think they're both pretty much easy to do. Yeah, one's the Allied Intervention Force. Again, they're not really gonna do anything because I don't see any reason to move them out where they're at. They're in good spots. We talked about that last turn, so they're good. And that leaves just the AFSR. All right, so we've got our camera already on them. Okay, so we were pushed back. I was hoping to get the Cossacks out here and just sort of run, run circles around these guys, but that's not really gonna work. I could give these Kuban Cossacks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. they actually have quite a big range. I could give them the Cossack raid token now and have them just go on a wild adventure over here, but that um, may not be the best use of our forces anyway. Uh, and we really kind of need resources, and this really just turns back to red controls, but we'll just keep that guy there. Uh, I really wish I'd have hurt them. That would have been nice, but that did not work out that way. So I think what instead we're gonna have to do is just keep pushing um, here, cycling in better units, units that can really do some damage, so we'll send over the Cossacks here. We're going to do a little shuffling. Ooh, yeah, that might be really required, unfortunately. I might need both those yet, so we got what? Oh, wow. Yeah, see, the one units are really good because you can have a bunch of those in a stack, <laughs> and they can just go rampage and do some damage. I wonder if it'd be better to attack that guy and move these guys up because then they won't really have the advantage but and i still have supply as long as they don't get retreated on yeah i wonder if i should do that let's get these guys maybe up because i don't think he's not going to pull that unit out it's just too risky he might if he thinks he has the advantage but that's going to be rough 
I should basically start ruling this flank is what I should be doing, but I can't abandon this middle, so I've got to do some things um, here. And I think that's going to work. I think we're going to try to pick on units that we can take on there, and then we'll just move. What is this? Still a six? Yep, he'll just move back up here. He'll go one, and he has to stop. Yes, yeah, so we'll just hold the line there. And I think I've got six everywhere I can. These Don Cossacks. I could give them this, the raiding token and send them around, but I'd rather send a fully strength unit. But at the same time, that pff, they're not doing much. I can't really move them anywhere. Um, technically, I could get him, and he could ignore his own control and come around here, which would be an interesting move. Oh, uh, I can't really move in that city, actually. It's C separating between... The sex and the sex of C. I can't cross that. Hmm. That is an interesting thought, though. Give him the token and send him around. If I had more units in the rear here, that would actually be a much more viable option because I could have viable cut threats. Um, oops, I took the guy out of here. He should have been still there. I took him out earlier when I was putting the camera. I forgot to move him back. Um, actually, it's probably... This guy's actually the proper one. They're all the same, but let's just be... Let's be nice and neat. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's what we'll do. And I don't think I want to give him the token to move around, I don't think. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's the most he could do. I mean, he could kind of cut off if he did that, but they still get the river connection. Yeah, it's just not worth it right now, and it's probably better to use him as some sort of weird reserve. I don't know. But maybe he should do something. Maybe he shouldn't. Go ahead and put him here because I might need this hex to retreat into. I might need some of that. So we'll keep these guys here. Okay. And we'll attack this guy because he's just chilling. Oh, he's actually in a city. Damn. Damn. Should I attack this guy with one to one odds? Because I just have five. <laughs> I guess if that's the case, I could have shifted this tank over. Actually, they can't move, so you'd have to go one, two, three. I guess he could do that. I think I will do that. But then, still doesn't give him any odds, but it does give him more units. And I think that's, but the thing is, if you get one to one, I'd have to get the most I can get out of that. I'm sorry, I'm rambling a lot and thinking. Four, six, eight, ten. Uh, yeah, I could do that, I think. Yeah, so that's what that tank will do. Put the pressure even more on Zaritsyn. I mean, let me even, let me let my dog out because he really wants it out so bad. All right, so I would attack that unit, but I can't. So we'll attack this unit because I think if I can weaken it, that'll make him think twice about what's going on over here. So just can't get the numbers I want on this guy. Anyway. Um, okay, so we'll attack. It is a one-to-one -one attack because I can't get two-to-one odds on this guy. Um, it's a one-to-one. -one. We'll roll die. All right, that's exactly what we needed. A nice six-to-two. Um, so this unit, I don't know if you can see that, he gets a plus two on his defense, so he gets four. I have already a plus ten because I counted it up, and then I have, what is it, many units fighting. One, two, three, four, five units. So that's 30, so I have 40, I'm gonna have the maximum I can get. So on one to one, maximum is a capital D retreat. So that's big. And he will retreat up here. Hmm. I could advance, but I have nothing to secure it. <laughs> and that's okay, because I can still sort of train around here and attack Zaritsyn maybe or something. I don't know. We'll see. Well, at least I pushed it back a guy and, and injured one, so that's pretty good. And that's the last chit. So let's take a look at the board. Um, as you can see here, we had some pushback, uh, but we are kind of doing a little cat and mouse game back and forth. I guess I should have reset these. Yeah, there we go. I've got a resource. I took away White's only one by capturing um, Rostov. I believe that's Rostov, isn't it? Yeah. 
Um, meanwhile, the Northwest Army fully healed and is over there. The Poles have almost totally recovered there. Um, Aab still hanging out there. And uh, the Siberians lost a lot of units again in a nice little encirclement maneuver here with the Reds. Those Latvian rifles are really coming in handy for the Reds there. Uh, and so they've been pushed back to the mountains where hopefully they'll just have to hold out and maybe deal with this pesky uh, partisan threat. And over here in the north, we see the fact that the Northern Army is rallied and ready to go. So meaning next turn, I think we can make a push on Tashkent if we can get initiative or if we can get the chip before they do or recover so many different variables. Anyway, uh, let's see if I can get a nice bird's eye view. So that is reds right now. And if we look at the turn, we'll be moving into an actual spring turn, or not, well, I guess it is spring, March and April, 1919.